All right, hey there, Prox Gaming crew, and this is Prox right here, and we are back for some more of the Fall Fantasy X Let's Play. And before we get ourselves all started, we got some brand new abilities to go and show off to you guys right now. And uh, now I went and did a little bit of some off record training and uh, battled out with a returning enemy known as the Dual Horns. Now we've seen these guys before back in the Meehan High Road, and uh, these guys can pretty much hit hard like a tank. Um, now that was just because that I think during the process of us heading through the Meehan High road and then also reaching off into the mushroom rock road from here uh i hardly ever really went out of my way to do a lot of sphere grid stuff which i want to say it's very important that you go and do a lot of the sphere gridding stuff because at some point you're going to be dealing with one of those type of enemies such as the dual horn that is going to be hitting almost like a tank doing almost like about 300 to almost close to like 400 damage uh when they go and do their attacks uh, now but those guys though however drop ability points which that is is going to be a very nice big help uh for your adventure and that's what really made uh this experience here within this episode pretty well nicely here for what this boss is going to be all about because uh I went and gave Yuna life and prey. That was pretty nice. Uh, I went and uh, gave Orin the guard uh, ability from there. Uh, I believe also I gave Titus some good moves as well, too. I can't really remember exactly on what they are, but you guys have probably what it already saw from there. I know that we got haste at this point, and I want to say uh, provoke is going to be another ability that should be happening uh, pretty soon. Maybe within the next episode, I'll do some uh, other sphere grading from there. Nothing to do with it. I just hate these but uh for kamari uh i have went and actually put in the level one key sphere got our very first of many level one key spheres to go and get ourselves interacted with and now i believe we can now go and start doing somewhat of a i want to say a crossover between i think lulu and kamari now because now i'm going to start making kamari somewhat of a black mage at this point and we're going to be adding in like different like uh having some fire elements to it maybe also gonna have like like thunder or blizzard type of ways out here which that should be pretty cool uh because normally technically uh you don't really have to go and do this type of way uh because uh i think later on uh, from what i have been hearing is is that you should be heading into another pathway which there is a special ability for kamari that you should be able to go and use in a later part of the game that is gonna like help you out so we'll probably maybe have to make a return back to where we last were uh to well i think during our time of where that sphere grid is at so i don't know if we can ever be able to go and re-grab those guys but we'll have to see that later but again the sphere grid is something new for me still that i'm still trying to learn uh throughout our way here uh because again if you guys don't know i only played final fantasy 10 when i went and played on the ps2 all the way up until the point of like the whole uh Kalika woods and everything or, or the Kilika woods as they like to call it here in this game uh but yeah so there's that weird red monster that we went and saw a little bit back i think within the border crossing between the mihei high road and that mushroom rock road there but yeah so that monster is going to be turning into the sin spawn gui boss that is going to be happening now this sin spawn gui boss is i want to say somewhat relatively annoying at the very beginning but on the second time, you actually do have a brand new type of partner that is going to be helping ourselves within the battle that's going to be going on. Now, it is going to be an our black mage, uh, so that's going to have some black magic spells. But uh, it should be able to get ourselves the job done pretty nicely as well, too, with what his attacks are going to be. Now, I'm not going to spoil out who it's going to be, but uh, let's just say that it's a guy that has blue hair. But I don't know if that is if uh if that's gonna probably uh, get you guys to know exactly who that is probably it'll be like the most like easiest one <laughs> but we have seen him before during our very beginning part of luca though but uh here we are now in this particular part and i don't really think there's anybody all that too much that gives you specialty items here so you can't go and talk to them if you want to get some extra dialogue from them. But again, nothing really is all that too important. But uh, later on down uh, throughout this area is, is that Awaka is going to be back. But also as well too, there is going to be some treasure chests uh, just a little bit past where that uh, where that uh, gate is going to be there. So it looks like somebody is already training so that they could be able to go and uh, battle out this uh, Sin creature that's going to be here. Now just to point this out is that sin is going to be showing up around within this area and there's going to be some pretty hectic stuff that's going to be happening once sin goes and shows up around here but again we'll have to wait to see for when uh for when the craziness starts showing up here 
but yeah so here we go got some items uh for walk for a walk though um so if you want to go and like buy out like on any type of high potions i don't know if he also has uh, mega potions here but if you ever need to go and stock up on stuff this is the perfect time to do it because later on once sin goes and makes his way into here this whole place is going to be uh let's just say not really around anymore uh, so if you want to go and buy up on anything, this is something that you can't go and do. The Lucid uh, Arm Guard is actually somewhat pretty nice to go and uh, buy at this point. But again, I am kind of short out on money and I don't really want to go and do too much within there. Uh, but there's Gata though. Please check all your equipment. Uh, so I guess he has to go through all the protocols here. Of course not. Now, there is another maester that's here, so maybe that's why he needs us to kind of go and drop all of our equipment just so that, uh, just so that we're not going to be doing anything too crazy. But yeah, unfortunately, God has to go and do the grunt work, right? He wants to go and fight Sid, but he just can't really go and do that just yet. But yep, there is a save point, though, so you may probably want to go and make sure to save up. Now, there is going to be a new item for Orin uh, within one of the chests. Uh, so we will be going to see it off with that. And I think there's also a high potion item as well, too. Just right around where that uh, where that new Orin item is going to be. So, yeah. So here's another one of these maesters, oh. though. Now, we already know about Seymour, but we don't really know about this guy all that much. Good to see you, Orin. So apparently this guy knows quite a bit about with Orin, though. <laughs> That's when Kenok, one hmm. of the four okay. maesters of Yevon. He leads the warrior monks and also commands the crusaders. Well, thank you for the info there, Lulu. All troops ready to move at your command, sir. Good. Dismissed. Sir. Tell me, Oren, where have you been the last ten years? We don't have time for this now, do we? Yeah, we need to get ourselves prepared and get ourselves ready for uh, whenever Sin goes and strikes up again, right? Them dream a little longer. What? Well, there's this guy. The man with the blue hair again, huh? Proceed. Yeah, now, if you guys remember, I think what was it during the last episode, uh, we got to go and hear that uh, Maester Seymour was doing some pretty shady business. Like, uh, it seemed like Waka got a little bit upset with the whole situation that with, uh, Seymour is that, uh, he was teaching some of the rookie guys that, that were here within this place to go and do some sort of Elbed Machina type of stuff and kind of breaking the rules and, uh, oh man. Well, that's what that Judas Priest song is always about. They're breaking the law, which that's not good. And then, and then he just wanted us to pretend that nothing ever even happened. Which that's even more shady than what it actually has to be. The fiends may break through. This place is not safe. Make sure you're prepared to defend yourself. So yeah, so just make sure to go and talk to that guy whenever you're fully prepared and up to go. I think I'm already set, but I may probably have to do a little bit of some formation change, which I believe that does happen here within this episode. Uh, so for me, I'm going to kind of just stick around with having... Uh, so it looks like Orin Proxa Lulu is going to be what my how my, how my go-to is going to be. Because... Uh, now, I don't know if I already went into detail about whole uh, the whole hit, uh, Sinspog Gui battle is going to be, but there's different body parts of Sinspog Gui that we have to go and worry about. And uh, I want to say at least using Lulu is probably your prime beneficial situation because we need some attackers that are going to be able to go and uh, destroy out the hands uh, of what Sinspog Gui is going to be. But the head is the main part that you want to make sure that you keep on going after. Uh, because if not, there's going to be a lot of crazy moves that is going to go and show up from there. And uh, that's why just having Lulu is uh, your more prime essential character to go out and have. Now, technically, if I had uh, my fire move, my very first black mage type of spell for Kamari, then I would also have him also being uh, somewhat of a prime K to, to also go and help out as well. But we have to kind of think of another strategy instead, which... I think for me is is that I'm gonna have to uh, basically um, I want to say use more so of Kamari and Orin and uh, and Titus to kind of uh, do more of the physical grunt work out here for this boss because uh, we need Titus to go and do a whole bunch of cheering and hasting as we can. Now I think around here within this boss battle, you guys are gonna be seeing that uh, 
that our character of uh, of Titus is going to be somewhat, I want to say, a little bit hyped up on caffeine, I'm going to just say. Because with the way of how we're going to have Titus, <laughs> he's just going to be like uh, like super fast when he goes and starts like knocking around with the, with the, with, with the battle that's going to be showing up. And, uh, and you guys are going to see why. But yeah, so that red monster looks like it's uh, going into transformation here. And it just already went and escaped on out of the cage. So yeah. Now we got a situation on our hands, which that's going to be a major problem. And oh boy, here we go. Let the battle begin. Now this part, I'm going to have to kind of edit out on a little bit because this battle did take quite a, uh, quite a lot of some time. Now this guy does have 12,000 HP. So that's why that this is going to be a little bit, a little bit in, in, in some capacity of, of quite a, of some editing here. Uh, but there is going to be one thing that I do want to go and show you guys all about, and that is going to be showing you guys the new summon of Ifrit, which uh, I have to say, Ifrit's uh, moves are pretty cool, if I have to say so myself. Now, what are we going to do out here? So it looks like we're going to have to go and set up for a Fire Fury and go for one of our uh, special abilities for, uh, for special overdrives, as I say, for, uh, for Lulu. Yeah, and uh, during my off recording, I have a lot of uh, of the overdrive already perfectly set for, I think, for majority of everybody on our team right now. So we're going to go for Grand Summon, and uh, we're going to have to go for, uh, let's go for Ifrit, I think, because that's what we have never really went and used just yet. But Ifrit has some pretty cool stuff, and I uh, can't wait till we go and start using this out here. So let's go and set it up. And uh, let's go into his special move of Hellfire. Oh boy, this move is so badass. I can't wait till we start picking up with more Aeons afterwards. But this move is so cool. It's like this dude literally starts like going all crazy on this on this one boss. Like puts him in this big huge like yeah, fire orb type of thing. <laughs> like I have never actually seen this type of summon move before, but this is awesome, man. I can't wait till I see the rest of all that. But that does 2,000, 2,000 attack power right there for the damage. Like, oh my god. So, yeah. So, now the arms have regenerated back. But, you know what? The head's already been taken out. And I'm already happy about that. It's just only just the body that we just need to really go and worry right now at this point in time. Yeah, there's that Demi move. Be very careful about with that. That can hurt for a punch somewhat. Uh, but we do have another Hellfire move. Because, you know what? Uh, we already went and I think used Yuna's one, I think, right? So that was a part of the Grand Summon, but now we can go and use Ifrit's uh, Hellfire move as well, too. And that already went and did a lot of overkill damage right there. So good job on Ifrit's part. And now we have to go back to the regular battle. Uh-oh. Ow. That's going to hurt. Uh... Well, all that we have left is just going to go and stuff for that fire, so let's go and use it up. Yeah, unfortunately, I'm going to have to uh, just not really dismiss Ifrit, but kind of just uh, love just get hit and just take the... Well, just basically take the fate, take the game over already, but you know what? Not to worry, because uh, we can uh, continue onwards with our party instead, so that's not going to really cause us any type of penalty, so we're all good with there. So let's go for our power break and uh, let's see what else we got. Nice, 287 damage. That's at least somewhat okay. So now we got ourselves with some fire here. Now let's go and see how much mana that that I would have put on for that special ability. So it looks like around like 400 damage. So yeah, so if you guys go and see right now is that uh, Titus is somewhat going relatively fast out here. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's like mainly hyped up on caffeine at this point in time. We're going to be seeing that, I think, for a majority of all of our other characters later. Oh, there we go. There's the overkill right there. Because I think it's probably for the amount of how many speed, like, boosting that I go and do. But, ow. Yeah, there's, like, almost, like, over 100 damage there. And, yeah, we have a lot of these Mega Potions. So, why not go and use it right now before we go and, uh, not get ourselves, uh, hopefully into a game over from that. So now we got ourselves with haste again, so we're gonna go and set that up. Uh, let's see. We got ourselves with 
Yeah, let's go for a jump hit. Let's see how much that's going to probably do. Probably not seed cannon. I think if I went for a self-destruct, that would probably go and maybe uh, hit everybody, which that would not be good. But yeah, no overkill, but uh, there is a special uh, type of item that I do want to go and pick up, and I actually did go and pick it up from the dual horn, uh, which I was kind of lucky about, and uh, you can pick up a special item for uh, for Kamari, and uh, that's going to be known as the harpoon item, and uh, we'll go into more info on that one, but I may probably go and do some readjusting out here. Maybe with the uh, different item that I have from before. But yeah, there's Sin right there. He's in a much more crazier type of state than already. Yeah, I don't think those little mini, uh, mini, uh, mini cannons are really going to do a whole heck of a lot to this guy. It's hardly doing anything, man. Uh-oh. And now he's bringing out the trouble already. Pretty sure that we've already seen those type of enemies already show up from the last time. Probably that was during the boat, right? Or whatever that was going on from there. But now we got ourselves with the second phase. I think so, pretty soon. Whoa! Oh my god, everybody's just getting Thanos stepped out of here, man. Oh man. Is everybody okay somewhat? Well it seems like Yuna's alright, but what but what about the rest of the other team? Oh god. Yep. But look at who's going to be uh, helping out throughout this battle. Yep, the blue hair guy himself is going to be helping out within our time. Maester Seymour. Now this guy is also another black magic spell user and uh, basically has the same type of stuff as what Lulu has. Stand back, Lady Yuna. Now, yes. he does actually have an overdrive move if you want to go and actually see how it does. It does take a little while because we don't have a loader drive or anything on this guy. So, um, it's just the way that, that w when he gets hit, it's just going to like take like almost like a million years. And I'm not going to really bother around even going out of my way to even show out the actual overdrive move. Um, so for me personally is that I'm not going to really like see it for the first time, but I'll probably check it out maybe on YouTube or something. But you guys should let me know about how cool his uh, overdrive is. But yeah, so right now we kind of have to choose out which type of type of part are we going to go first. So we're going to go probably for the head. And that's what we're going to have to go and do like normal anyways. Now we could go and probably use Valfor, but probably not going to really go and use that all that much there. Ow. Okay, well there goes the 104 damage. Yeah, now... Mind you, with the hits that this guy is doing, not really that much of a problem. Th this guy is like 10 times easier than what the first form was. Okay, so I think we just did a little bit of an edit there, I'm pretty certain. So we'll just have to go and uh, do the last part here now. Uh, let's see, what are we going to do here? Another fire damage. Is Master C is uh, Maester Seymour going to get the final hit? And he does, actually. So there we go. And we're all good. No more of this guy anymore. So Sisbongui is done. Thank goodness. And there we go. We got a lot of stuff. Oh, the katana instead. Yeah, normally if you had... Well, yeah, like normally in this battle, you would probably maybe get the harpoon. But we already have it. So instead we have the katana. Now, I think the katana, I'm not really too entirely certain on what that is meant for. I don't know if we could give that over to maybe, uh, maybe the Orin or not, but. I love these cutscenes, man. They, they did a lot of, like, really good, like, resolution and everything here for the PS4. Uh-oh. Yeah, I don't think that beam is doing a whole heck of a lot. 
It's gonna like already destroy itself or something. It's gonna bounce back. Oh yeah. Oh no. Yeah, that whole area that we were just at, completely destroyed. So now we're gonna have to wake up in this, like, catastrophe that just went on and happened from here. Now, mind you, a lot of people have not really made out of it alive, but at least Titus is here. And I think also God is also still alive as well, too, which, uh, that's the one person that we have to go and speak around over here. Now, you really don't have, like, a set of, like, a red checkpoint marker here. So, it is kind of a little bit tricky to go and find out where Gata's at, but. Oh, man. The whole fortress and everything that they had is just completely gone. Oh, man. Well, I did get a uh, a brand new case for my uh, for my 3DS uh, XL capture card. Pretty excited for that. Um, it's actually like a, uh, I think it's like a clear type of casing one that I have, just so that it can protect us. Like, just protect uh, if I ever, I think, like accidentally like drop it or something. It, it, it's what? What's going on? It's all right, there, Gata. But I uh, also did get a brand new R4 card, though, for my 3DS XL. Pretty happy about with that. I added some uh, some new DS games to it. Don't you run away from me! So, yeah. So, now, basically, what's going to happen here is, is that... Uh, looks like... T well, for us, is that we're going to have to jump on into the water there and try to chase on after... Uh, well, Everyone Jack, aka known as Sin... Your powers are still too weak. But I must do something. Well, we already tried out everything that we did, you know. There's nothing that we can do. But just like how it happened before, back in the uh, in the catastrophe of uh, oh, well, what was it? The area of of uh, of uh, Kilika. That whole area got decimated, right? By Sin itself. So, unfortunately, Yuna has to go and do her specialty type of dance as how it's going to happen here, too. I have no idea what I was thinking when I ran after Sin that day. Before I knew what I was doing, there I was, chasing him down like a thief at market. Maybe I was angry. Maybe I wanted to go home. I kept thinking of Xanarkand, and... And now we got ourselves a little bit of a flashback here. Get to see our younger selves once again. Oh, well, maybe not the flashback just yet, but I have no idea what the heck this place is all about. Oh, it's like a whole bunch of ghosts just wander around this whole entire area. Now, remember that one person that we went and saw at the very beginning of our time of Fall Fantasy X? Well, that same character is going to be showing up around here once more. We still don't really know exactly who this person is. Whoa, hey, there's a blitz ball. Ow. <laughs> Still the best. 
Seems like that's kind of like his catchphrase all the time. <laughs> I'm just the best. Then do it now. What did you say? You just said you can. <laughs> Tomorrow, maybe. Why not today? Why do today what you can leave for tomorrow? There he goes again. Oh man. I thought I sensed my old man there. Somewhere. Or maybe it was just Sin's toxin playing tricks. Well, that could happen mind. there as like that as well too there Titus. You never know. But yep, but now we wake up into the same exact place as what happened from before. How many died today? People die and Yuna dances. When will she stop dancing? When will it stop? Yuna won't stop dancing. Yeah. Not until Sin is gone. Those were my thoughts then. I think. I see you're still here. Huh? Many stories ended here today. But yours goes on, I see. What? Well, it looks like I believe we're getting closer to the end of our time of this episode. So anyways, thank you guys so much for watching this episode of Final Fantasy X. And of course, I'll be seeing you guys in the next one. And of course, peace.